Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Uncut. This is the Exposing My Journal series where I am sharing my private diary basically of how I was feeling from a five-year relationship starting in 2004. This was found in the garage in a box. I threw away everything else except for this journal. I decided to keep it for me to read it for the first time in years. And I'm going to process this with you guys because I am telling you right now, I was in a very toxic relationship. This five-year relationship was the first time that I experienced physical, emotional, and mental abuse in a romantic relationship. So it was my first serious one. Um, so here it goes. If you want to start from the beginning, just click out and go to my playlist. Um, and you can start from the beginning so you know where, where we're at here. Okay, give me a second here. I already read New Year's. Uh, a couple days after New Year's, January 2nd. So this is January 3rd. This is the very next day. And I wrote this at 11.19 p.m. And this is, we're now in 2005. <sighs> I didn't get to talk to you at all today. Sad face. I have a feeling you were ice skating with dot dot today. But anyways, being at home made me think a lot. Yeah. So have you guys have felt from being on a break with someone that you love and being worried that they're spending time with other people. And I was like having this thought because from the last journal entry, he had mentioned that he was thinking about talking to this girl that he was actually talking to before meeting me. So yeah, so this is like the ups and downs when he would get in touch with me and then he wouldn't. It's like you're in this limbo. You are still attached. So obviously I'm very still attached. I know that I need to let him go, but I'm just like so devastated that I'm not experiencing the love and affection that I had with him in the very, very beginning. And two, this 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 being on a break, but then he still tr like... It's that kind of situation where it's like, oh, he gets to do whatever. And I'm over here, like, I don't even want to talk to other guys. I'm just being in this pain of not being wanted by myself. And he gets to just come in and out anytime he wants. So just a little background there. And then I put quotations. If you love someone, then let them go. Say, so like, I already knew that I needed to let him go. And they come and if and they come back to you, then it was meant to be. This is kind of like BS, huh? Where do these sayings come from? I know that, you know what? It could work in, in, in certain types of relationship, but me in 2000, 2020, looking back into this, this is kind of like bullshit in this case scenario because, I mean, I'm working on letting him go by writing in my journal and like trying to make sense and accept the fact that like this shitty situation is going on, but the times when he came back to me, it was because he wanted to make sure that he still had his, his person waiting for him while he had all the fun. All right, let's continue. It goes something like that, but that's what I'm relating to right now. Sigh. Last night before going to bed and after writing, once again, I burst out into tears. And this time I wasn't crying because you were mad at me or it wasn't like those other times. I cried because I just felt that I really don't have you anymore and that you're moving on. The thought of it just scares the hell out of me. I'm not going to write as much as last night. I keep on picturing you, picturing you and her and about how you had someone for New Year's and I didn't. Ouch! I gave my best to you. There's nothing left for me to do but have one last cry. Do you guys know what that song is from? Oh my god, I'm probably like listening to all these sad songs. So if you didn't know, it's One Last Cry, Brian McKnight. Okay, the quote's there. So sad. Okay, so I wrote down one page. So what I'm getting from this is, you know what? It's great that I had a journal to go to. And... What do I have to say about this journal entry? See, this is the point where like 
when reading this, I feel like I'm in the healing stage because it sounds like I am really realizing that I'm feeling that he's moving on, right? So I'm in pain and I'm writing. The problem is, is that see, obviously this was still in the beginning of a relationship. It were together for five years. So obviously he came back. And so it's so important when you are watching yourself, realizing that you need to move on and that this person is showing signs that they're moving on, you really got to ask yourself, if they came back, how are they worthy to have you back in their lives again? Like, how worthy are you to accept someone back into your life that was not there for you when you were going through pains, that was not considerate of your feelings while they go out there and do their own thing, knowing that you have shown all the love. So this is another topic to bring up about self-worth and about recognizing when you're in a healing stage, know that you're very vulnerable. And when you're hurt, so hurt, and you're feeling at rock bottom, this is when you really need to protect your heart because it's mostly like it's most likely that you will believe any kind of loving words, loving actions that shows up. And we're unable to really see if this is bullshit or not. So it is so this is the really hard part, and especially when we don't have around us a healthy support system. And yeah, I'm like super heartbroken here and I'm yearning, right? Like I am desiring comfort. I am desiring someone to love me and make me feel really important right now. And so that's what I have to say for this. And um, yeah, that's what I would tell my... um, my, this is 17 year old self. I would tell my 17 year old self that, you know, since it's the fact that you're writing shows that you are expressing yourself in a healthy way. And, you know, would you say since you're, you're attempting to heal right now and get through this, would you say it would be a good idea to continue to keep your distance from him and continue to write because let's really look at what's going on here. You know, let's really look at the consistent actions and let's really look into this and ask yourself, does he actually really love you? The, his inconsistent actions just shows already that he does not have the space to care for you like that. And the fact that like he's doing other things, and he has already told you that he's going to talk to the girl that he, he, he was talking to before you. The fact that like he's considering that move shows that he is not ready. And we, we are so, we're unable to see this so much when we have opened up our hearts and we have let them all in. So it's so hard to step into the truth of what's going on because you so wish that you would experience the type of love that they gave to you in the beginning and the type of love that you have given out and you're expecting that you're wanting that to, to come back to you. So yeah. So stay tuned for the next entry. We have quite some pages to go. (laughs) Let me know your thoughts down below. What did you resonate with this? And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer it as well. So stay tuned for the next episode. The next date is January 15th. So so time, some time has passed. And just from looking at this, wow, I wrote a lot. So whoa, there's one, two, three, four. And it looks like I'm mad because just a little precursor. Look at the last page of the next entry says bullshit. So can't wait to go into that anger. <laughs> 
All right, guys. See you on the next one.